Did today's news mess with the 49ers real plan? Yes. Yes, absolutely did. Because here's here's what also came out today that was glossed over is it sounds like he requested this closer to when he stripped his social media. Yes. Like right when we made a big deal out of nothing, remember that? That's when he actually requested the trade. Right. And they've kept it behind closed doors because they're either working on a deal to try to keep him there and try to, you know, cooler heads may prevail. Let's give him time. Or they're actively trying to trade him. What happened was all that stuff with his brother broke yesterday. Okay. Even though it was three days old, it happened yesterday. That's what everybody found out about it. So once that happens, guess what? Everybody sees that, including national media. So what do they do? They start picking up phones and digging because now they see, hey, there's an issue here. Let's do our due diligence on this and figure out what's actually happening. Oh, by the way, Debo Samuels requested a trade. That's how we we got here, in my opinion, is all that stuff from his brother, whether he meant it or not, whether he knew it or not, whatever your thoughts are there, that is what stirred this whole thing up. That is what poured salt in the 49ers game. And reality is, I think they were going to try to get a deal done until the 11th hour and then trade Debo on draft night if they, in fact, couldn't get a deal done. And now every other team in the league knows that Debo's requested a trade. That that hurts the 49ers leverage. It absolutely hurts their leverage. It does. So that's it's an important distinction. They knew this a week ago. So today's mm-hmm. news is really, you know, our our revelation, not the 49ers revelation. Correct. but. This revelation, the, when the Niners got it last week, I do think it messed with their I never, I, I don't think the Niners ever thought it would come to this. I think the Niners thought, we got him. You know, we'll let, we'll send Parag in there. Parag will, you know, you know, soften him up a little bit, you know, he'll, and then, and then we'll finally give him something at the, at the 11th hour. We'll make him sweat. We'll make him sweat. You know how, how Parag does. And, but Debo's a good guy. He's a team guy. I mean, Fred Warner, where everyone goes through it. It's a rite of passage. It's like yeah. the fraternity. It's yeah. amazing. He's like, oh, he's, good. he's a good guy. Debo took one one day of Hell Week, and he was like, "Nah, not doing this. I'm great. I don't need to do this. Forget Parag. Forget your whole history procedure. I want what I want. And if you don't give it to me, I'm I'm requesting a trade." And I was like, oh, "Wow, we did not see that coming." <laughs> so I think it meant, I, and I don't think they came this offseason like, "Yo, let's lowball Debo, piss him off, and no. trade him." Like, no, there's no way they they thought. I bet you what they thought. We're going to really take care of Debo. We're going to give him $18 million. He's going to love it. And then Trent Balky gives Christian Kirk $18 million, and the whole market changes. It's okay. We're good. We're just going to stick to the plan. We're going to stick to the plan. It's like, no, you can't stick to the plan. The plan just changed. They Trent Balky changed your plan. What are you going to do? Nothing. This is what they did. This is, okay, to me – and this this whole thing that you just said, and it just kind of hit me, is a bigger problem. And the 49ers are showing over and over and over that they are reactive versus being proactive. Right. And that is how you lose your spot at the top. And Grant, we talked about this multiple times while the 49ers were making a playoff run. And after that playoff run ended, we talked about how things happen all the time that you cannot predict. We talked about COVID. We talked about the mass exodus in the Jim Harbaugh era that nobody saw coming. And everybody thinks that it's all hunky-dory and the 49ers are going to be contenders. We got 26-year-old Debo and 24-year-old Nick Bosa and, and all these other things. We're good. And then you're not good all of a sudden. And things aren't what you thought they were. And so the 49ers have been very reactionary this offseason because they waited too long on Jimmy Garoppolo and every step along the way they're like well, now we got to wait for this now we got to wait for this now we got to wait and they they continue to do it with Debo it's the same mistake over and over this offseason which is crazy because I trusted them going into now their sixth offseason let me tell you the difference between Kyle and his administration with the Niners and Sean McVay and his him, his administration with the Rams the Rams will let players people go but if they get a five-star blue chip player, they keep them nowhere. The Niners are like, oh, you're really great. Buckner, Debo, you're just too expensive for us. So what we're going to do is we're going to trade you and get some value. Like the Rams would never do that. And that's why it just seems like 
it's an old way of doing business. It's kind of the Patriots model from 10, 15 years ago, back when the cap was half of what it is now. Now it's much more like the 80s and the 90s. And the teams are the most successful are the teams with the richest owners who spend the most <laughs> because the cap is not that hard to navigate anymore. I'm just saying. Anyway, we're getting off topic. Raymond Martinez Jr. says, what up, fellas? If they can't agree to terms with Debo, do they package Jimmy with Debo to a team in need of a makeover? Personally, I don't like the idea of packaging D Jimmy and Debo together because I feel like Jimmy takes away from Debo's value. That's the way I look at it. Debo's worth a lot. Jimmy's an albatross. If you could get X with Debo, you would get X minus with, with, with Debo and Jimmy. I would trade them separately. That's how I would look at it. Look at the it. only team that makes sense to do that with would be Carolina, in my opinion. And you probably have to do much like what the Rams did with Detroit, which is give up Jimmy and take back Sam Darnold, but make them pay for you taking back Sam Darnold because he is, believe it or not, slightly worse than Jimmy. So I'll throw this scenario out there. You could do a Debo and a Jimmy to the Panthers for Burns, Darnold and their first round pick. That's the only the scenario person, I look at that. Can I be the first person to say fuck no on Sam Darnold? Fuck no. <laughs> I agree. But if it means getting a first back and a really good, really good defensive player, I'll listen tell to you that. something about Sam Darnold. I learned this last year with Josh, with uh, Josh Rosen. All right. I was, I was like the king of like, what is the problem with Josh Rosen? Why is Josh Rosen not working out? You know what the problem with Josh Rosen is? I think it's pretty clear. He doesn't love football, man. He doesn't love football. He's good at it. He was rich. He went to all the camps. He has a good release. He's mechanically sound. And he figured out probably it's 15. Man, I can make millions doing this. I don't think he ever really wanted to do it. I don't think he ever really wanted to do it. Right? And when you get to the NFL, everyone's great. Like the ones who are, are successful, the ones who like not just want to do it, are obsessed. You know what I mean? And that's Debo. That's not Josh Rosen. So – and that's to me a little bit of Darn does Darnold strike you as someone who's like loving football, chopping in his passion? <laughs> like, no, he's he's got the lowest football IQ of any starting quarterback. He never improves. He's like a young Jimmy with a little bit of mobility. I was gonna say, that sounds very familiar. Sucks so much, man. So please don't bring in Sam Darnold. Luckily, Trey Lance loves football, so we got that going for Seems us. Seems to. Seems to. For now, the Niners don't mess with him.